Welcome back, everybody. This is my episode four of my current series, uh, Clockwork Empires. We're now into Alpha 49A. This is day nine of the colony. Oh, the metalworks is kind of complete. Um, yeah, one thing I'll address right away. In one of the comments, I think in the comments of episode three, one sharp-eyed viewer pointed out that there's this mysterious black pyramid beside the kitchen. And... Um, so uh, I, uh, there was another commenter who mentioned that it might have been an obelisken, but it, in fact it's it's not, but it's closely related. This is an idol, idol of Quagaroth. This falls under the category of mysterious artifact, and it's a thing that can be randomly dug up by your colonists. And by the way, I've got bandits incoming. Six bandits. Um, 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 um. I, I've only got three militia, but frankly, I've only got one pistol in the entire colony. So for now... I'm just going to say, take what you want and don't kill anyone. I would happily put up a fight if I had more pistols. Um, but we're still working on getting that metal, metal works up and running. So no pistols yet. I can't afford to have anyone else die. Hopefully they won't take anything important. Uh, yes, the Idol of Quagaroth. So as your colonists flatten out land and dig things and clear terrain, there's a small chance they will reveal fishy idols or these things, or things that look like... Uh, like sewer lids, they're flat discs. Oh, I've got a new overseer. All of those things, well, first of all, they drive the person who dug them up crazy. And they might contribute to their cultish tendencies. Uh, they're also a thing for your laboratory to research later in the game. Look at these jerks. Strutting into town. Gonna take my bushels of corn. That's right, Bran Griff, I hope you're proud of yourself. Even your useless militia. They spent the first two days on strike. Now they can't defend us against bandits. That's that's mostly my fault. It's, again, uh, no metal. So where did we leave off last time? Well, we were in the process of constructing the metalworks. The first thing, the first module I need for the metalworks to be functional is a way to smelt raw ore into ingots, which can be then used to construct things. So the metalworks needs these modules, the stone smelting kiln. Uh, again, as we covered last time, those are made in the ceramics workshop, but they're made at the ceramics workbench, which I had neglected to build. Uh, so I went ahead and queued up the ceramics workbench in the carpentry workshop. So you can see it's queued up here. But of course, we soon realized it wasn't getting built. And the reason for that is because we had no timber. Well, we've got plenty of timber now because a little bit of time has elapsed. Uh, so when the next work shift starts, that is to say, on the next day, we should have that workbench built, and we can start getting a functioning metalworks up and running. Uh, specifically regarding mines, now I know I'm going to need iron to make those pistols. Well, let's take a look at this. For instance, uh, so all these grayed out icons are things the metalworks cannot currently make because it doesn't have the requisite modules. We can see here, uh, pistols are the cheapest firearm and the cheapest way to arm your militia, which is why I intend to make those. If I had more resources, I'd consider making the musket or the blunderbuss, for instance. Where am I going to get the hematite? Well, there is a surface deposit right here. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to mine these surface stones right now, but um, these little lumps of hematite aren't going to last me very long. And... For purposes of making metal goods, it might be worth my while to actually set up a mine here. Now, this hasn't been properly surveyed, but it's a good it's a good guess that a mine constructed here will produce hematite, uh, simply because it's right on top of a hematite uh, surface deposit. So, let's build a mine. There's so little flat land here. I guess here will be fine. Here we go. What's this? Animals are eating my crops. Haha! -ha. Joke's on you, Dodo. Also, my soldiers would be killing this thing for food, except they're all on strike. Ah, Brand Griff, I am sorely disappointed in you. How are we going to drive Dodos to extinction if no one ever wants to kill them? Uh, anyway, let's get on that 
metal, the, no, no, the mine shaft. So again, the red hash areas are areas where I cannot build. So I'm just going to put the office he here. Okay, and I will put the mine shaft itself he here. Of course, any good mine shaft needs a door so people can get in and out, and some windows, just so our workers don't hate working there. Right. Now, the mine itself is going to require planks and stone to build, and the mine shaft module must be constructed at a carpentry. So I'm going to queue that up now. Now, I'll point out and this is new for this revision, the mineshaft module requires three planks and no iron. Whereas in previous revisions, in, in every previous revision actually, mineshafts required iron ingots. That was especially problematic because uh, to get iron ingots, of course, you'd have to smelt them, which meant before you built a mine, you'd have to build a metalworks. And before you built a metalworks, you had to build a ceramics workshop, and it was very, uh, it was just a giant pain in the butt to get the mine up and running. Now I can set up the mine, before the metal works and and also the ceramics workshop are done ahead of time and I have an alert regarding fish people what am I going to do someone just ran into a fish person I can deny that they exist or I can shoot them on sight I I'm just gonna deny they exist for now no point in provoking conflicts uh, with a militia that has only one gun as we were point as I pointed out last time we wanted to install a couple new modules in the kitchen to expand the kitchen's repertoire. With just the stone ovens, we're only able to bake uh, bread and make basic food, but now that we have a spice rack and a workbench, we are allowed to make these other goods. Uh, for instance, farmer's stew, berry medley, tinned meat. Now, in addition to needing these specific modules, of course, all of these require additional uh, components to make. For instance, obviously the tinned, various tinned products require iron uh, to make the tin. Uh, okay, that makes no sense. Uh, Sphalerite does in fact exist in this game as a source of tin. However, uh, you need an iron ingot and meat to make tinned meat because it uh, tin is not used in the construction of tin cans. Let's just, just roll with it. Also, berry preserves and pickled fungus. Those you'll note, uh, you can tell by the illustration, they require glass bottles as well as the appropriate uh, the appropriate food there, uh, fungus and berries. Glass is made at the ceramics workshop. So the ceramics workshop, let's see if we have any... Nope, got no sand. We will acquire sand and sand is turned into glass at the ceramics workshop. And then the ceramics workshop also turns glass panes into glass bottles. Um, so the, the kitchen has the potential to make more stuff. I don't have the materials to make any of that stuff. But the more resource intensive foods also uh, satisfy the palates of overseers more so than um, basic food. Uh, also the sausages, they don't require any special materials but they do consume two meat per single bushel of sausages. Uh, so they're quite expensive but they're a good way to keep your middle-class colonists happy. In fact, if I've got a little, no, I've got no surplus meat whatsoever. But when I do, when I get some extra meat on my hands, I'm going to say first priority is to turn some of it into sausages and then cook the rest into basic food. As for general food stocks, I think we're doing okay. We've got 40 stew here. And fortunately for us, the bandits, the corn bandits came by and stole just the, like the remnants of our last corn harvest. We actually didn't lose too much. It still kind of bugs me that my metalworks has to sit on top of a hill. Ah, oh, so ugly. Okay. Uh, what else do we need? I, I notice many of these buildings don't have doors. It's probably because I haven't ordered any loading bay doors. So that's your next task. All right, still waiting on construction. Oh, what's this? Oh, telling me the mine shaft is complete, but has no owner. Again, no point in assigning anyone here until the mine shaft is complete. And there's the autosave. 
So we're still waiting for the stone ceramics, er, sorry, the stone smelting kilns to be completed in the metalworks. Um, let's see. Take a look at our commodities here. We have, however, begun. Oh, we have harvested all the surface hematite there. So as soon as it's ready, we'll be able to start making some iron. Uh, iron ingots, that is. Okay, so the ceramics workshop, the workbench, has been installed in the workshop. So the workshop is... Did I queue? Oh, now I can queue up the stone smelting crucibles. In fact, I want two of them. Now these will require planks and stone. Two planks and six stone each. Which means I don't have enough stone, although I do have barely enough planks. The carpentry can take care of itself. I do need to... Well... We've got stone actively being quarried. So yes, we're fine on that. We can just let that matter lie and uh, the colonists will take care of it themselves. Now, I've still got a severe bed shortage. And to alleviate that, I think I'm going to have to, just on an emergency basis, I'm going to have to install some beds here. Let's say just two more in here. It's not elegant, but it's better than nothing. And actually, I have to commission two more beds from the carpentry. Beds are probably higher priority than the loading bay doors, so I'm going to move them up so that they get made before. In fact, I'm going to give them the highest priority. Okay, so the colony's humming along. Uh, bandit raid could have been worse, although I don't want to let that continue. Let's take a look at our work crews. So Drusilla Gaslug's crew is on strike. Again, she's very angry, and most of her anger stems from... Actually, I believe most of the specific memories that made her anger have been displaced by new memories, which is good. Uh, what's going on here, though? There's a fight going on in the colony. Ah, fish people... Hostile fish people sighted. You don't say. Oh, got two immigrants in. Bren Griff, finally doing his job. Protecting the colony. Now my militia is starting to take some damage, so maybe the next thing I want to build might be a... Um, I was going to say a butcher's, which is almost right, uh, but what we want is a barber shop. Oh, Sydney Golden Solder. Go get him, militia. Oh, you're running the wrong way. Oh dear. I'll be fine. The boys in red will protect you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to build a barbershop next. It's not a good time to be doing push-ups, Edwina. I'm sure Brian Griff will take care of... He'll take care of it. All right. So I believe there are a couple of fishman corpses in the town limits. I need to say, for any fish people to fall in these boundaries, please butcher them. Leaving their corpses means uh, a corpse that is left for an entire day without being either dumped or butchered or buried, will uh, start to generate vermin. Uh, in this case, little beetles that will come out and eat your crops or your produce, which, in, it, um, in addition to being bad for your crops, of course, the presence of corpses upsets your colonists. So you want to deal with those as best you can. I, I guess? I'm not sure if the vermin that this corpse generates... Uh, we'll make them into town, but just to be safe, I'm going to say butcher this one as well. Okay, and it looks like another nice corn harvest is coming in. Ah, take a look at this. We have fish people steak, and we can follow them going into the kitchen. And what is Rowena Tomp making? Oh, I believe she's making bushels of sausages. As you recall, uh, I set the kitchen priorities to make a little bit of sausage uh, to maintain small level sausage and a larger level of basic food. Now sausages require two sources of meat, which then get cooked into a single bushel of sausage, which is a food of medium quality and satisfies overseers when they eat it. Ta-da! So um, we now have a lovely bushel of sausages. Don't ask where they came from and everything will be fine. All right. Hydunia has just completed construction of at least one smelting crucible, which means the metalworks will shortly be functional. 
Oh, and Zilfia has actually gone out and butchered that fish person. She's bringing back the meat as well. Oh, here's a fish person I... Here's a fish person I forgot to deal with. Actually, this is an interesting point. So we take a look at Drusilla Gaslock, who... Uh, she's upset for various... As we mentioned earlier, she's upset for various reasons, and as a result, her squad is on strike. However, one of her desires was to see a fish person, which hopefully makes will mean going forward she'll be a happier person. However, her experience of uh, encountering a fish person for the first time increased her fear and decreased her happiness. So we have some conflicting priorities here. Uh, just like, just like real people. Anyway, let's get rid of this corpse. Busher you. Let's get rid of these horrible blood stains by clearing the terrain. There we go. Okay, now we can get the metalworks up and running. So who amongst our colonists would make for a good metalworking crew? Mildred, Johan, Bertie, oh dear. Oh no, Bertie is our uh, farming crew. Um, let's see, Chauncey, one of our newer ones, Robert. Are, are all of these guys either cannibals or doomed? Oh my goodness. Oh, Zilfia. One of her desires is to work in the mines, which is great because we ha we have an opening in our mines. God, too many windows. All right. Here's our freshly constructed mine. You get... Oh, and I have a new overseer. Excellent. All right, Zilfia's crew, you get to work in the mine. Uh, I still need a crew for the metalworks, and we didn't find anyone specifically appropriate, so again, I'm going to take Mildred. Mildred, you may now be our new uh, metalsmith overseer. Right. Now then, uh, let me turn the walls back on, just because I kind of like them that way. The next most crucial module that a metal, uh, metal works needs is a smithing forge. It's a module that must be built and then installed into the uh, workshop. Now, the interesting thing is that the metal smith is actually made in the metal works. Sorry, the smithing forge is made in the metal works. Which means I actually order the metal. So I actually queued up the smithing forge in the metal works. And then I go to the uh, module menu for the metal works. And I designate where it should go. I guess it will have to go here. I, I don't really like the idea that it overlaps um, the active point of other modules. There we go. So at this point, it should now be handled automatically. Um, workers, as materials become available, will make the Smithing Forge module. They'll deposit it in the stockpile. And then somebody else will take it from the stockpile and install it in the forge yeah a little a little inefficient but what are you going to do now the next thing we are going to build actually let me double check our resources here okay we're okay for wood we are very short on stone before we do anything else let's mine up some stone actually let me double check the mine here this mine will produce hematite which we knew clay sand and coal which is fine uh, unfortunately it doesn't produce sand it is handy that it produces coal in that it will produce um, probably enough coal to smelt the hematite that it also produces. And I'm not going to need to look for an alternate fuel source in the immediate future. All right, let's designate these rocks for mining. And the next building we're going to build will be the barber shop. I would like to build a barber shop. Again, the barber shop doesn't need to be adjacent to the stockpile. So I'm just going to build it out here and sort of complete my ring of structures around the fields. I'm going to build the barbershop larger than it strictly needs to be, just so I can, again, cram some more beds in there. All right. Here's the door. Now any good barbershop needs a good barber pole. And I believe it's mandatory for barber shops to have chairs. Get three chairs for now. Why not? And a cheap cabinet. You get to keep your uh, spare razors and things. And we're going to give this place some nice cheerful windows. Whoops. Oh, 
All right, so what is that? Three chairs, a cheap wooden cabinet, and a barber pole, all of which have to be constructed at the carpentry. One, two, three, cheap cabinet, barber pole. And who's on strike today? Birdie. Uh oh, our farming crew is on strike. Actually, let me double check that. Um, that might be a problem. That might create a knock-on problem of not having enough food, which makes people unhappy, which promotes striking, which means less work gets done. So I don't want. Um, let's see what's making. Let's see what making Birdie so unhappy. Well, again, she's extremely tired. And, specific to Birdie, she's unhappy that as a middle-class overseer, she had to sleep in a cot with the uh, with the filthy regulars. Well, um, what can we do about that? I can certainly install more beds. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Actually, what we certainly need is more uh, middle-class beds. Expensive ones, as we can see here, there's one overseer per work crew. And I've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got 12 overseers, all of whom would prefer to sleep in middle class beds like this one. Of course, I've only got two middle class beds. So I'm going to create more bedding, and it's going to be a practical bed. Hope you like sleeping in the barbershop. One, two. Again, those are things I'm going to have to queue up in the carpentry. This is a very busy place. As you can probably already tell. Okay. Oh, forgot to assign those workers from earlier. So, because the carpentry is always so busy, I'm actually going to assign one of the new workers there. And... I guess one of you guys can go to this other crew. Here we go. Has the mine produced anything? Well, we've got a small amount of hematite so far. So that's not too bad. Now I don't want to overwhelm the colony with jobs, uh, but I think we have room for additional jobs. If we can, if we click on the job button here, we can see what uh, the priorities, or I should say the jobs that the colony is currently undertaking. And it's pretty modest, actually. The, the, the amount of jobs is quite small, so I can probably ask them to do more. And we have another six bandits coming in to loot our stuff. Oliver's cheating looters. Again, we don't have the ability to fight them off, but soon we will. When this smithing forge gets completed, I'll be able to make pistols and arm people. For now, I'm just we're we're gonna have to put up with uh, bandit raids one more time, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll be the last time. Oh, what's this? Oh, a new bandit crew has it. We're, we're really having a big, severe bandit problem this time. Four bandits have set up camp nearby. It's a new crew. Um, we don't have any option but to maintain a sort of a uniform bandit policy, which means uh, we'll try to maintain peaceful relations with them and not shoot at them by default. And Hydunia has written a favorable report, which means I've gained five standing with all civilized factions, not just the home countries, but also uh, the Mecca Republic and the Novo Rus and the Stalmark and here are the six bandits. Uh, I thought they were here to steal our stuff. Huh. Well, that's fine. <laughs> they just ran past town. Fine with me. Such a shame you weren't able to find my stockpile. Now the metal smith... Um, let's see, it has not yet made the smithing forge because that requires three bricks and two smelted ingots, of which I have one, and I'm realizing now I don't have any smelted ingots because I didn't ask the metalsmith to make any. Bah! Okay, uh, I'm going to pause here for a sec, too many things going on. So, 
I'm going to say, tell the metal smithy, the smithy, to maintain a stock of three iron ore at all times. So they're going to start making iron ingots, and when they have enough, they're going to make the metal smith. So that's done. Now I have notification that a bandit wants to abandon one of the local gangs and join my colony as a worker. And I say, uh, sure? Okay, yes. Now the reason, first of all, by accepting a bandit, that makes the 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 gang they left smaller, which is better for me, because I have more people and they have less. But it worsens our relations with the bandits. So if I had peaceful relations with them earlier, um, this might move our relations toward hostility. Nonetheless, I need the workers. Oh, speak of the devil. We are effectively a state of war with bandits, which means uh, that we are now on the sort of shoot on sight policy. Where did you come from? Well, that's fine. So we've got a dead bandit corpse. He was trying to steal a bushel of bones. Ah, too many notifications. Okay, first of all, bury the corpse. The game will tell me that I do not have a graveyard, which is true. We have been joined by... Ah, okay. First things first. I need a graveyard. Ah, these lacquer trees will be expended soon enough. Collect our lacquer out of the new graveyard. Okay. Um, a herd of giant hungry beetles is incoming. That's unfortunate. And how to dispose of the dead bandits. I'm going to say standing policy is always to bury their corpses. And we've got two more immigrants. In addition to Elsa King. So, let's see... We're soon going to have enough pistols to outfit the military, so I'm going to assign two of the new immigrants to the militia, and one of the additional worker can go here. Okay, the barber shop is under construction, and hopefully all will soon be well. Actually, let's forage these lacquer trees. So our colony is facing some problems here, but hopefully they'll be resolved soonish. Um, I think it's uh, the more pressing issue is these continuing bandit attacks and our inability to defend ourselves, but that's being remedied. The metalworks will soon be able to produce pistols. And I know we have the manpower to actually fight. Um, another recurring problem in the colony is that we have not nearly enough beds. Uh, so that will be my next priority after I get the metal the metal assembly process up and running. Uh, we've still got enough food for everyone. And the corn crop is doing okay, although we'll see what happens when those beetles arrive. And we have a source of, oh, here they are. And we have a source of metal, so that's not an issue. What I probably should have done was fill up the gaps between buildings with gabions. And the game right here is telling me that the barbershop is complete and uh, could probably use someone in there. No! Uh, we've got a... Bandits and beetles are both attacking. I am not happy about this. Okay. That's fine, Brand Griff. You have more important thing. Okay. So you'll see here, none of my colonists have weapons. And they're really... Uh, see them shaking their arms here? They're trying to shoo animals. Which is obviously not as effective as actually just shooting at them with bullets. So, uh, Brand Griff, please return to the stockpile. Let's see. Rally the squad back here. No, no, please, please stop. Come back. Oh, oh dear. All right, so he's on his way back now. Um, I think we've successfully shooed the beetles away, but they're not going to, they're just going to hang around until we can take care of them. And again, Brian Griff has the colony's only gun. Uh, the, it looks like they didn't do too much damage to the corn. Uh, all right.
right, let's cancel his job so he will hunt them properly. Please shoot this beetle. Come back here. Uh, okay. Might take... Um, there we go. A little slow on the draw. He gets the job done. So the problem, of course, with killing the large beetles is that when they die, a variety of medium and small beetles spill out of their body, all of which attempt to eat your crops. Oh, and there goes Bran off to attack something else again. Oh, and there's a straggling bandit off on the edges of the map. That's fine. They didn't do too much damage to the crops, and we can actually uh, eat beetle meat. Not to mention, killing beetles, uh, giant beetles, I believe, will produce a bucket of lacquer, which will be useful in producing lacquered planks later on. So we've weathered the immediate storm for now. We're not starving yet. I mean, our food stockpile should uh, get us through whatever shortages are introduced by losing crops to the beetles, which, frankly, we're, we're not. We're pretty minimal. Uh, we'll soon have the metal industry up and running, and uh, then we'll have a functioning militia. And then the colony, hopefully, will be a little bit more self-sufficient. So I'm going to cut this episode off here. Uh, the game is Clockwork Empires. It's in early access, so Gaslamp Games is still working on it. My name is Alfred. I do these uh, Let's Plays approximately once a month when uh, a new revision is published on the Stable Branch through Steam. Uh, you know, if this looks like your sort of thing, uh, I'll give it a try. Well, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.